waiting for the judgment of the Most High. That's right. And God help you if you stand before him in judgment. Oh, yes. Listen at this. The days of visitation are come. The day of visitation is coming. The day of recompense the are come. The day of recompense are come. Are come. Israel shall know it. Israel, God's people, That's right. shall know it. The prophet is a fool. Uh-oh. Pastor Gino Jennings' critique of Billy Graham's behavior centers on several key points reflecting his strict interpretation of biblical principles and his emphasis on maintaining doctrinal purity. One of Jennings' primary criticisms of Billy Graham is related to his approach to ecumenism. Ecumenism refers to efforts to promote unity among different Christian denominations, often by finding common ground and working together despite doctrinal differences. Billy Graham was known for his inclusive approach, seeking to unite various Christian groups in his evangelistic crusades and efforts. However, Jennings argues that this approach can lead to compromises on essential biblical truths. I don't have confidence in no foolish prophet. No way. Touching, claiming, and you can't lose with the stuff I use and all these gimmicks. And you people that are sitting under these preachers getting excited because they're throwing you their jacket, their T-shirt, their drawers. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Antics. When I was a child, uh, my mother and father grew up with a false prophet. They used to do that stuff. His name was Brother Billy. He's dead now in the Christless grave waiting for hell. And Brother Billy, when I say extreme antics, he would go as far as putting all women pantyholes in church. He would get right up and he's supposed to be an apostle. He was no more an apostle than a duck is a turkey. That's right. And uh, he would get up right in church and tell the people, tell the women, the Lord spoke to me and said, if you want your healing, give me your pain. And the way you give me your pain, give me your stockers. And this is going on in church. Church was packed. Oh, Lord. The women would take off their stockings, their patty holes. Billy would put on women in the church stockings. Mm. He did it in the Lord's name, <laughs> hiding the fact he was a cross dresser. My oh, Lord, my Lord. According to Jennings, true Christians should separate themselves from any form of false teaching, as he believes that association with groups holding unbiblical beliefs can dilute the purity of the gospel message. He cites biblical passages such as 2 Corinthians 6, 14, 17, which admonish believers not to be unequally yoked with unbelievers and to come out from among them and be separate. So Billy will put on the women's stockings and put on the women's pumps, their heels. And will shout around church. Oh, come on. <laughs> <laughs> come on. You viewers that got these Sesame Street preachers. Amen. These Mickey Mouse preachers yes. throwing you shoes and coats and throwing handkerchiefs at the people. That's yes. right. For what? For what? Come back to Bible. Yeah. That's right. Judge the conduct with the Bible. That's it. Well, they touch Jesus' garment. He ain't take his clothes off for you. No, he didn't. Another significant point of contention for Jennings is Billy Graham's frequent interactions with political leaders. Throughout his ministry, Graham was seen as a spiritual advisor to several U.S. presidents and was often involved in political discourse. Jennings believes that such associations can lead to compromises on biblical principles. He argues that spiritual leaders should remain distinct from political influences to avoid the risk of diluting their message or being co-opted by political agendas. Jennings emphasizes the need for spiritual leaders to focus solely on their religious mission and to avoid any entanglement that might compromise their integrity or the purity of their message. He cites examples from the Bible where prophets and leaders maintained a clear distinction from political authorities to uphold their divine mission. I'm going to drive you with Bible. Oh, yes. I'm going to pound you with Bible. Right. I'm going to plague you with Bible. That's right. Glory to God. The prophet is a fool. The prophet is a fool.
the spiritual man, spiritual man is going mad. Is mad. Is mad. For the multitude of thine iniquity. The multitude of thine sins. And the great hatred. And the great what? Great hatred. Great hatred. Hatred. They you have know deeply you, corrupted themselves. They did what? They have deeply corrupted themselves. That's the problem with the churches. That's right. They have deeply corrupted, corrupted themselves. themselves. Money yeah. have corrupted the religion. That's right. Jennings has also critiqued Billy Graham's method of evangelism, suggesting that it sometimes lacked the necessary emphasis on repentance and holiness. While Graham's evangelistic campaigns reached millions and brought many to faith, Jennings argues that his message was often too accommodating and did not adequately call out sin or demand a clear, uncompromising stance against it. Jennings emphasizes a more stringent interpretation of the gospel that calls for repentance, holiness, and a clear break from sinful practices. He believes that the gospel should confront individuals with their need for repentance and transformation rather than offering a message that might be perceived as more palatable or less demanding. Jennings points to biblical passages such as Matthew 7, 13, 14, which speak of the narrow path to salvation and the need for a life that reflects true repentance and commitment to God's standards. Time is fulfilled. And the kingdom of God is kingdom at hand. Of God is close. Repent ye. What? Repent ye. That goes for everybody in here. Right. Preachers, deacons, so-called reverends, everybody. Everybody. Repent ye. And believe the gospel. But That's plain. <laughs> that's right. Repent ye and don't doubt what's written. That's it. Repent ye. And believe the gospel. Believe the gospel. Now as he walked by the sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and Andrew, his brother. Yes. Casting a net into the sea, for they were fishing. And what? And Jesus said unto them, come ye after me, and I will make you to become fishers of men. Do you hear that? And that's what he made his apostles, yeah. fishers of men. Of men. Of men. Our job is to catch men and women with the gospel. That's right. I certainly am not traveling for fun. No. I mean, I don't get no fun out of it at all. <laughs> Amen. I used to be excited when I was younger and go to a new place. Oh, yeah, well, I can't believe I'm here. Yay. That's gone. <laughs> How much of it? All of it. <laughs> now I go simply to do God's will. That's, that's what you do. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's right. Amen. When I'm driving to church, uh, brother's taking me to the temple. I'm looking at architect that's going on and rejoicing over the souls that come to hear the word of God and obey the same. In summary, Pastor Gino Jennings' critique of Billy Graham centers on what he perceives as compromises in ecumenism, political associations, and the gospel message. Jennings' stringent approach to biblical interpretation leads him to emphasize the need for doctrinal purity, separation from unbiblical influences, and a clear, uncompromising call to repentance and holiness. While Billy Graham's ministry had a profound impact on millions, Jennings' critiques highlight the tension between seeking unity and inclusivity versus maintaining strict adherence to a particular interpretation of biblical principles.